Hello and welcome to iNerdius and the second episode in my series on the 100 novels that I think best represent 20th century science fiction. The second book that I want to talk about is The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. This book is a first contact story that came out in, uh, what was it, 1996. This is the 97 edition. It won the Arthur C. Clarke Award, the James Tiptree Jr. Award, and the British Science Fiction Association Award. It was also reviewed in mainstream media, got a lot of positive reviews. And the reason I'm including this, well, there are several reasons. First of all, because it's a first contact book, I think that any any collection of 100 books that's, or 100 novels that's going to um, successfully represent 20th century science fiction has to include some first contact stories, without a doubt. Second, this book is one of those that transcends the genre, which means to me that it was accepted by mainstream readers and reviewed by mainstream critics, whereas I don't think a lot of science fiction you know, gets that kind of treatment in the mainstream, or did back then, maybe today a little bit more so. It posits an interesting alien culture that is comprised, uh, or that comprises, I should say, two distinct yet symbiotic groups. One which is a pastoral farming type group that has a low level of technology. The other which is an urban or city dwelling group that has a, a very high level of technology. It takes place in two different time frames. One is the main character's present where he is dealing with the fallout of the expedition to this world. And the other is the flashbacks, you could say, of that expedition. And the main character is a Jesuit priest. He is the one who figures out what the signal that was discovered. Uh, the novel essentially takes place after a SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence signal is discovered by the Arecibo radio telescope, which is no longer functional, unfortunately, no longer operational. It basically takes that idea and instead of, what's interesting about this book to me is that instead of it being a big government expedition or a big corporate expedition, it actually is an expedition that is financed by the Jesuits, by the Catholic Church, I guess, through the Jesuits. And so this Jesuit priest is allowed to go on this expedition along with his friends who helped him figure out what this signal was. And then three other Jesuit priests also go along. And so they travel to this world. The, the society they discover, like I said, is these two parts. And at first, everything seems to be pretty peaceful and okay. And generally, it actually is. This isn't a society that's, you know, like at war or anything like that. But the, I don't want to give it away. So I'm trying to talk around, <laughs> trying to talk around the story without really giving it away. But essentially, the expedition winds up tragically um, in a lot of ways for most of the characters in one way or another, including the main character to a certain extent. And so because of the, that story, the way it's told, and because of the fact that this character is a Jesuit and his friends are atheists, essentially, science-oriented people, there are a lot of interesting philosophical discussions about the nature of faith and things like that, which I love in science fiction. I don't think a science fiction uh, approaches that topic or those topics enough. So I, that was one of the things I thought worked really well in this book that I thought was worth just reading it for that, actually. And so 
those are those are the reasons why I think this novel would, you know, should find a place in that shelf of 100 novels that best represent 20th century science fiction. Anyway, that's that's why I decided to make this book the second in my list of those 100 novels that best represent 20th century science fiction. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video.